All right, here are the PowerPoints for Astronomy uh, 101. I just want to uh, go over these. All right, so the first chapter is the cycles of the sky. All right, so we're going to investigate that. Um, this, of course, is our textbook, um, Explorations by Arnie. All right. Um, so, so one of the things uh, is that, that they talk about in, in the in chapter one is um, the historical nature of of you know the the cycles of the of the sky. Um, one thing you know this this is obviously Stonehenge, um, and it turns out that Stonehenge actually lines up with uh, I think it's the summer solstice, um, which is a very important. Uh, it has to do with the position of the sun um, on the first day of summer, uh, and and uh, you know and there's other so that's that's just one example of of ancient you know ruins that that uh, shows that humans were interested in the motions of the heavens. All right, so that's that. All right, so let's get let's get into more. Um, you know, you know, this isn't about uh, archaeology. Um, so anyhow, the, uh, the the first thing that I want to introduce is this idea of what's called the celestial sphere. All right, so the celestial sphere is an imaginary sphere. That's that's a really important idea. It's imaginary. It's a model basically that we use. Um, we just imagine that the Earth is surrounded by this sphere, and the the, the sphere has these um, these little points of light on it. Uh, that you know, the, which are of course the stars, um, and so uh, you know, ancient humans would have seen these. Of course, we can see them now. You know, the the thing about the the night sky nowadays, of course, is it's much more difficult to see um, in our modern society. You got to get be pretty far away from um, street lights and things like that to be able to see the night sky the way the ancient peoples uh, did, um, and. You know, it, it's spectacular when you actually do get a chance to do that. Um, all right, let's. So, so it, this is this is a um, you know a three three dimensional representation um, of of you know what what we what we know it's three dimensions, but of course it's it's you know um, yeah, it, it is uh, it just it's a model. It's a model that we use to. Um, just to kind of think about where the stars are, and uh, later on we'll we'll set set up coordinates to use the celestial sphere and everything. Um, but for right now, it's just this model that is just a, a simple sphere around the Earth. All right. So um, you know, one of the things is uh, is in, in on this celestial sphere. Of course, there are you know the stars, and the stars make up. Um, and this, you know, this was true for, for different civilizations all across the planet. Um, most of these so-called constellations uh, have come down to us, not, not all of them, mind you, but, but most of them have come to, down to us from the Greek civilizations. Um, but, but uh, you know, like there, there's, there's uh, constellations in the southern sky that, you know, the Greeks simply didn't know about. Um, and uh, you know that, like, for for example, there's there's a constellation in the in the southern sky called Microscopium, right? Which has nothing, you know, that that, that was that's a very modern uh, instrument, you know, comparatively, um, and 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 uh, you know, it's, that 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 was something that was that was around, and and uh, you know, when 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 uh, people started mapping the southern sky. Um, of course, you know there there were people, humans that lived in the southern hemisphere and and had mapped the the sky themselves. Um, but but this this is this, this was uh, more um, you know like like Europeans uh, you know, looking at the the southern sky and naming things. Um, all right, so so there are these these um, these the constant the so called constellations, and so th these are just. Um, these are, are two-dimensional representations of the stars um, on on you know this this what is truly a three-dimensional object this this celestial sphere 
Um, now, the, and the stars can be very, very different, d distant, d very, sorry, very far from each other. Like the, the stars in, um, here, the, like this constellation is called Orion. It's a very common constellation to look at in the in the winter time. Um, it, it, you know, most of these constellations, by the way, can be seen at any time during the year. Um, but you know, to, to see Orion in the in the summertime, you'd have to be up at you know four o'clock in the morning or something like that. Um, and and so so usually what we talk when we talk about um, that that the, a constellation is a winter constellation or a summer constellation, what what we mean by that is you know early in the evening when the sun has gone down, you can you, you can see that constellation. So that that's that's what we mean. So Orion is considered a winter constellation, um, and and of course there's of course the there's an, another constellation that is actually always you're always able to see. Um, actually, I'm sorry, this is not a constellation. This is um, a part of a constellation, uh, and and by, by the way, a part of a constellation um, it, it is called an asterism. To, just to let you know, that's not that important, but um so 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 this 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 you know seven star um asterism is called the big dipper it's actually part of the constellation ursa major the big bear and what's special about uh this constellation is um if you live in the northern hemisphere of course you can't see it from the southern hemisphere um but but in the northern hemisphere you can always see the big dipper right or i, I I'm, I'm treating it like a constellation but it's not um, technically. All right. So, so, so the Big Dipper basically, um, rotates around the, the North Star. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in, in a moment. All right. So, so the constellations are just groups of stars where humans have, you know, assigned these patterns, right? Orion is a hunter. Um, Ursa Major obviously is a, a big bear. Um, here's, here's another constellation. Um, this is, of course, Leo. Um, Leo the lion. Uh, usually, when I'm outside and he's pointing this out to other to to, to most people, this is I, I always point out um, uh, this part right here, which is a kind of a backwards question mark. Um, this this bright star at the bottom of the question mark is called Regulus, is the bright star in in the constellation Leo. Um, when I was a kid, I always thought that this this was the tail, right? That this is this is actually not the tail of Leo, because it kind of looks like the tail, and this would be the head. But you can see in the in the in the actual picture that the Greeks imagined, um, the head is somewhere over here, and his tail is over here. Uh, he, you know, it's just it's a picture; it's an imaginary thing in the sky. I mean, the, the it, it's just a region, right? That that's the important thing in astronomy, is the, the constellations just say, oh, okay, in a certain direction in the night sky, um, you can you can find, you know, the the star Regulus, right? That this star right here, you, you can actually find that, um, you know, if you, if you know where the constellation uh, Leo is, um, and and Leo is important in the in the in the following sense, um, it is a uh, it is part of the. Um, the zodiac, of course. Uh, the, 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 these are um, constellations. There, there's actually thirteen of them. I know th most people think there's twelve, but there's actually thirteen. Um, and these are constellations where um, the, the ecliptic passes through. The ecliptic is the path of the sun, all right? The path of the sun in the sky, and so um, the ecliptic passes through that. And so this is this is one of the one of the thirteen constellations of the zodiac. Um, this is another constant, a very famous constellation called Cygnus, uh, the Swan. Um, it's some people just call it the Northern Cross. Um, there's a uh, a very bright star called Vega that that's uh, that's that's in there. Um, well, let's see, is Vega? Let me think about that. Yeah, I think Vega is part of Cygnus. Um, there's there's like these three stars that that in the so, so Cygnus is occurs in the in the summer you know this is one of those summer constellations um, it's right in the middle of the Milky Way or part of the Milky Way um, so you know you can kind of see the 
I, I don't know how well you can see this, um, but uh, if, if you ever get into some dark skies, you can actually really see the Milky Way in this, in this, uh, where, where this particular constellation is. All right, so, uh, let's see, da, da, da. yeah, all right. Um, so, so let's talk about the, the, the daily motion and the annual motion of, of the, of the sky, right? That's, that's the, the basic idea. Um, and, and right away we run into, uh, you know, of course, from our perspective, the sun moves and it, 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 it actually doesn't, of course, um, the, the thing that's moving is the earth. Um, the, now the sun does move around the, you know, in the Milky Way galaxy um, that, that we're part of, but uh, that we, we don't really notice that because we're part of the entire solar system, the whole, entire solar system. So, so you know, we, the, the Earth, Mars, all, you know, all the planets, all the comets, everything move along through the, through the galaxy with our sun, right? But there are, you know, we, because the Earth is rotating, it seems as though the sun, of course, rises in the east and sets in the west. Right? So, of course, what that means is we're rotating from west towards east. Right? The, the Earth is rotating in that direction. Um, if you, if you, uh, yeah, of course, you, the, the moon is, is very easy to see. Um, you can see it during the day. Um, at, well, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to see during the day, but... Uh, um, like early in the morning or late in the evening, it's it, or, you know um, it's easy to see. Um, the planets are very easy to see as well because they're they're much brighter than the star. Well, most of them, I, I should qualify that uh, they're not all brighter than the than the stars. Um, there's some some stars that are actually brighter than some of the planets. Um, all right, so. Uh, and, and the, the planets, of course, also, just like the sun and the moon, rise in the east and set in the west. But that is just because of the Earth's rotation, right? Um, all right, so astronomers thought of, of all the motion in the heavens to be this daily motion, or they called it diurnal motion, um, of the celestial sphere, right? So, of course, we know that the Earth is actually one of the... One of the planets, and it moved. You know, one of the eight planets. Let's let's establish that now, uh, and then and you know we, we rotate around our axis. Um, the yearly motion is, of course, the Earth going around the sun, right? So we're we're, we're not only are we spinning around on our own axis once a day, once in a twenty four hour period, um, we're also you know taking roughly three hundred and sixty five days to go all the way around the sun. And, and because of that, we see different stars in the night sky um, at different times. All right. So, so that's, that's, uh, um, yeah, so that, 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 that's, you know, basically what happens. All right. So let's get back to the, to the celestial sphere. Um, so this, this line right here is called, this red line is called the celestial equator. And then that's actually really uh, a, a real simple object um, to to think about. Just imagine the Earth's equator, right? So, so there's this this line that goes all the way around the Earth, um, and extend that out into space. Just just go straight out into space, and that's what the celestial um, the celestial equator is. And so there are objects or constellations above the celestial equator, and constellations below the celestial equator. Um, and, and of course, that corresponds to where you are on the Earth. Um, you know, we, we're in, in South Carolina. We can see some constellations in the southern sky, some, um, you know, below the celestial equator. But but we can't see, um, you know, uh, a, a good number of them, as a matter of fact. Um, and we can see all, you know, because we're in the we're in the northern hemisphere of the Earth. We can see all the stars in the northern hemisphere. You know, at different times, we don't see them all at once, but um, we see them at different times. All right, so that's the the celestial equator. Um, there is, of course, this uh, um, there's this thing called the ecliptic uh, that I mentioned before. That that is um, this this. Uh, let's see, do they have it here? Uh, they're not really showing it yet. Uh, but anyhow, the the ecliptic is um, where uh, 
the, the, you know, 